I'm James Barfield with your Urban Connection. And remember, this is the show that is often imitated, but never ever duplicated. And tonight, I want to talk to you about something that I think you will find quite interesting. And if you watch this video through its entirety, I almost guarantee you that you're going to learn some things about your governor that you didn't know. You see, on yesterday, Monday, myself and Mary Dean, who is the president of Kansas Advocate Inc., had a meeting with Governor Laura Kelly. Now, the purpose of this meeting was to address some issues and concerns of the African American community that have not been addressed. And one of the reasons they've never been addressed is because the governor previously has refused to sit down and address these concerns. Now, one of the reasons for that, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain to you. This governor has bought into the myth that all Blacks are the same. All Blacks or African Americans are monolithic. And nothing could be further from the truth. So Mary Dean had a set of issues and concerns that she wanted to address, and she did. I had an issue that has been an issue of mine for the last 10, 12 years. And my issue was and is today the concern by African Americans throughout the state of Kansas about the ineffectiveness and the invisibility of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. Now, as I think most of you know, or many of you know, the this African American Affairs Commission works or is under the umbrella of the governor's office. So the governor bears the responsibility for seeing to it that this commission is effective, is impactful, and contributes to the improvement to the quality of life for African Americans throughout the state of Kansas. Well, during the meeting on yesterday with the governor and her chief of staff and one of her aides, I learned, well, I won't say learned, it was affirmed to me, my suspicions all along, that this governor does not give one iota about the plight of African Americans in the state of Kansas. Now, why do I say that? Like I said, I want you to stick with me through this uh, video because you're gonna learn a lot tonight. The reason why I say that, ladies and gentlemen, because this governor, prior to being elected, made several tri trips into our churches in Wichita to make empty promises, empty campaign speeches, and had little time for African Americans once the election was over. You see, she had our votes secure and locked up. And at that point, she turned her back on us, okay? Now, not only me, I'm not the only one saying that, but we've got groups, we've got individuals, we've got ministers, we've got churches, we've got everybody is saying the same thing. So we can only conclude that this governor, now three and a half years in to her first term, and that term is coming to an end here in about five months. This governor now wants to come back 
and make campaign speeches, make more empty promises, empty speeches. She wants us to participate. She wants our vote, but she doesn't want to give us anything in return for it. You see, I'm under the impression and the belief that my vote is not for free. You have to earn it. This government has shown no intention of earning our vote. Now, let me tell you why I say that. This government has been in office for three and a half years. And I want to ask all of you in Wichita, and I would ask the same of those of you in Topeka, the same of those of you that are in Kansas City, in Hutchinson, Salina, Guy City. Has the governor ever come into your city for a listening tour of the African American communities? That's what I thought. <laughs> the answer is no. But the governor makes trips to Wichita, and I'm sure Kansas City and probably Topeka, for a group of African Americans that are grinning, skinning, and looking for a photo op opportunity. The governor has been deceived and duped into thinking that all of us are so enamored with her that that's what we will be satisfied with. An opportunity to scan and grin and engage in a photo, photo op opportunity. We have been defined by this group in the governor's mind. So let me just tell you what happened during my time addressing my concern. As I've told you here before, the Kansas African American Affairs Commission was put in place in 1997 by former Governor Bill Graves. It is to be governed by a state statute. And the state statute 74-9905, that is the one that I'm going to refer to. Now, I brought this up before, and I brought it up yesterday. Now, I just want to tell you, first of all, it's not me that I'm speaking for. It is me that is speaking, but I'm not speaking for me. I never have. I never will. As I told the governor, I'm not looking for a job in her cabinet. I'm not now, and I was not in 2019 when I worked diligently to get her elected, only to have her turn her back on me, as I said, and others, once she had our votes locked up. So the governor wants us, over 165,000 African Americans, to believe the big lie. You know why I say the big lie? Because it's akin to the big lie that's being told by Donald Trump when he says the 2020 election was stolen from him, but he can provide not one iota of proof. So here we have a governor that despite complaints, concerns coming in from all over the state, that this African American Affairs Commission is totally ineffective, has no impact on the 165,000 plus African Americans who reside in the state of Kansas. As a matter of fact, as of today, 80% or better of the African Americans that reside in the state of Kansas have never heard of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. Now, as proof of that, I want to just take a minute and read you a few letters that I have in my possession and the governor has in her possession. And they go like this. This one is from a gentleman in the Kansas City area. And he writes, what exactly does this commission do? It's concerning to me that most African-Americans in Kansas has never heard of you. 
what grants are being provided to the communities? Do you have any projects that you can speak of? What are some accomplishments of this commission in the last year? I'll wait to hear your response. Ladies and gentlemen, this letter is dated March 4th, 2017. To this date, June 21st, 2022, this gentleman has never received one response to his letter. So let's go on with another letter. And this one was dated July the 27th, 2019. And it is from an organization that is called People of Color Political Think Tank and Action Coalition of Kansas. And it is headed by one Glenda Overstreet who lives in Topeka. And she says that during the meeting, the July, no, during the, the July meeting, the introductions were provided. Those in attendance were that then reviewed and discussed the mission of the people of color political think tank and coalitions. An overview of the societal issues were identified, which included voting rights, eliminating police brutality, enhancing economic development, and financial literacy opportunities in the communities along with other societal issues. It was also discussed that there is some concern in the community about the lack of visibility and the presence of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. Now, I want to tell you about one other one. And this one was written May the 26th, 2022. <laughs> That's right. And this one says, and I'm not going to read this entire letter. I just want me to read a couple of little paragraphs because basically this will get to the meat and the heart of what we're discussing here tonight. And it says, there are many problems connected to this fight as this is institutional racism in the highest places and its most covert finest. In my humble opinion, also this entails collusion, whether intended or not, but not only whites, but also our African-American legislators, okay? Now, what happens here, ladies and gentlemen, is that these are people that are fully aware of the Kansas African-American Affairs Commission and its deficiencies. So now I'm gonna take a time and I wanna to read to you one more letter. And this one is from a sitting state senator by the name of Olita Faust Cadeau. And I'm not gonna read, again, I'm not gonna read all of this, but I'm gonna read what is the meat of the letter. This commission has been ineffective for years and we have had four different people serving as the director over the years with the commissioners, two for each corner of the state. And our commissioners are Mr. Joseph Elmore and Jonathan McRoy. Mr. Elmore resides in Derby and Mr. Elroy resides in Wichita. And she goes on to say, and to be quite honest, I don't think any of them truly understand what the original mission and vision is regarding the Kansas African American Affairs Commission or what they're supposed to be doing. Plus, since the commission is now under the direction of the governor, the black legislators really don't have a lot to say on how it operates. What a shame. I also agree with Mr. Barfield. And I don't think that the appointed commissioners are doing their jobs either. Now, with this in mind, 
And with my reporting previously on how the state statute 749905 is not and has not been the focus of this commission for the last 12 years, you would be baffled and you would be offended to hear the words of the governor regarding this commission. Now, I'm gonna read to you what the governor said. And she said this as she was making an appointment to the commission on November the 27th, 2019. And she basically reiterated that same statement on yesterday. After hearing me point out how this commission has totally ignored state, state statute 74-9905. And this is what she had to say. This commission devises strategies to address the public policy concerns of the African American community through partnerships with state agencies, corporations, and foundations. It also assists with programs, grants, and research. But here's the kicker. This commission does important work in addressing concerns unique to the African American community in Kansas. This from Laura Kelly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I read this, it immediately insulted my intelligence. The governor had the audacity to make this statement only two days after I had submitted to her office a petition with 560 signatures on it, asking for the resignation of the entire commission and the, at that time, executive director. The reason for the request? Because they had failed to carry out the duties and responsibilities as outlined by state statute 74-9905. And as I pointed out before, the segments in this statute go from A to K. And I'm just gonna list a couple of them here because I'm gonna get back to them later. A gather and disseminate information and conduct hearings, conferences, and special studies on programs and problems concerning African-Americans. This has not been done for over 12 years. Develop, coordinate, and assist other private and public associations and organizations with understanding the problems of African Americans. This is not and has not been done for over 12 years. I'm gonna read one more to you. Propose new programs concerning African Americans. <laughs> Folks, I'm laughing, but it's really not funny. It's really a disgrace and a shame that this governor has spent over $1 million during her term as governor for this organization to fulfill the segments of this state statute. Now, let me tell you something else, ladies and gentlemen. The Kansas African American Affairs Commission meets four times a year. And in addition to this statute, there are supposed to provide to the constituents, to the legislators, to the governor, a yearly report detailing and documenting how they have spent the money and what accomplishments they have made and be able to document what impact they have made on the African-American communities throughout the state. 
That has not been done. And I want to show you something. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in tune with several other African American Affairs Commissions throughout the state. Every single one of them provides their constituents with a year-end statement. You see that down there? It says year-end report. You see that? This is for 2021. Let me get it over there so you see it. This is for 2021, a year-end report. This is from, uh, uh, as you will see here, as you can see right from the state of New Mexico. Okay? Can you see that? Put it where you can see it. Okay. The state of Mexico. All right? Yeah. Here's one from the state of Minnesota. Okay? Can you see that, ladies and gentlemen? State of Minnesota. Here's one from the state of Oregon. I don't know if you can see, I hope you can see that. The state of Oregon. What I'm trying to show you here, ladies and gentlemen, is every other African American Affairs Commission in the country that operates under the governor produces on a yearly basis an annual report that's available publicly. Anybody that requests one can have one. Most of these you can go on these various websites and see them. But you won't find one on the Kansas African American Affairs Commission website. Not for the last 12 years. And you know why? Because they have not produced one. They have no impact on the African Americans in the state of Kansas. So after my, my meeting yesterday with the governor, I told the governor that since they didn't know how to run an African American Affairs Commission, that I had a friend who was an expert in running African American Affairs Commissions. And I had offered them his services twice before. Well, I told her since I had this meeting come in with her, that I had reached out to my friend once again to see if he would still be available to do some consulting work. She said, thanks, but no thanks. Now, what does this tell you, ladies and gentlemen? If they don't know and don't have the knowledge, and don't have a qualified executive director nor qualified commissioners, because these commissioners are mostly appointed simply for one thing, because they're black. So now if she doesn't have the knowledge and she doesn't have anybody in her cabinet that has the knowledge of how to run one of these, why would you not take the services of an expert who can show you how to get a, a bang for your buck? Because as of right now, between the Brownback administration and the uh, Kelly administration, they spent over $3 million on the African American Affairs Commission, and they've not gotten a 1% return on the investment. Now, the question many people ask is, what are they doing with the money? And I can't tell you. Because nobody can, because there's no reports. The governor herself gets no reports. The chief of staff gets no reports because there are no reports. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. After my meeting with the governor, I had a press conference scheduled and I went to my press conference and I expressed my disgust, my dismay and my unhappiness with the ineffectiveness of this African American Affairs Commission. And when I finished and I drove home, and when I got home, I looked on the website of one of the TV stations in Topeka that I had done an interview with. And I found out that they had reached out to the African American Affairs Commission for a response to my allegations. Now here's what happened. 
The commission said Barfield is misrepresenting the African American Commission. So I am doing this show today for one simple reason. Because I want to say to anybody in the governor's circle, that means the governor, the governor's chief of staff, governor's secretary of appointments, anyone related with or related to or associated with the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. If you have one thing that you can show the public that you have done that has made an impact on any African American in the state of Kansas over the last 10 to 12 years, bring it on. Bring it on. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to show proof that you have had one town hall meeting in any city in the state of Kansas. I want you to show that you have coordinated and assisted and cooperated with the efforts of state departments and agencies to serve the needs of African Americans, especially in the areas of culture, education, employment, health, housing, welfare, and recreation. Show me one instance in the last 10 to 12 years. I want you to show me that you have developed, coordinated, and assisted other public and private associations and organizations with understanding the problems of African Americans. I want you to show me that you have proposed new programs concerning African Americans. And you don't have to show me, show the public, show the 165,000 plus African Americans throughout the state that you have done any of this. And I want you to show that you have evaluated existing programs and proposed legislation concerning African Americans. I want you to show me that you have stimulated public awareness of the concerns and problems of African Americans by conducting a program of public education. I want you to show me that you have conducted training programs for community leadership and service project staff. I want you to show any of those. And finally, I want you to show the entire Kansas community and the Kansas taxpayers one year end financial report, not financial, but one year in report on your activities. Show one year, and it doesn't have to be 2021, show for 20, show for 19, show for 18, show for 17. I'll accept any of those. And now, if you cannot show any of that, it shows us all that you are a fraud. You are a fraud, and the governor is a fraud. And that's what it's all about. You are wasting millions of taxpayers' dollars and providing not a single benefit to anybody in the state of Kansas, with the exception of the executive director, who has a paid position of between 70 and $75,000. So anybody in the governor's office, anybody in the commission office, it's time to either put up or shut up because we have exposed what you are doing and have been doing for the last 12 years, you have been per per perpetuating a fraud on the taxpayers, both black and white, and Mexican, and Asian, all of them. Anybody that has contributed to the tax uh, 
dollars of of this state are paying for you to be a fraud. Put up or shut up. I'm James Barfield.